All right, so uh, my topic is uh, holistic server security. And uh, the reason I'm doing this, that's his fault. <laughs> he challenged me to do it, so challenge accepted. A uh, quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. Um, obviously, why I'm doing this to you, his fault again. Uh, quickly, who I am. Um, I'm going to talk about the topics of network, hardening, patch management, log reviews, backup management, and a few last thoughts. Originally, this concept was planned for 15 minutes. Uh, jumped down to eight, so I'm going to have to really hurry through it. Right, so my name is Sean Rucci. I'm security consultant at Skip. Um, uh, here you go with the information. I've got my own website, www.5e4n.ch, and uh, here's my Twitter handle. My previous experience came from being a system engineer. I have no previous experience as a speaker at a con, so this presentation was thrown together really quickly, so don't expect any miracles from me. Right, so first topic was network. This is how a lot of network tra uh, traffic usually looks like. So uh, uh, my concept will here be start filtering at this point. Anything that stops here doesn't bother the servers, and it's our job to make the servers happy, and we like having happy servers. Uh, implement network segmentation, because anything that it can be segmented properly can help increase security. Use firewalls according to your concepts. If you have a concept, and you do have a concept. Everyone has, yes, everyone has a concept, perfect. If you have firewalls, of course, you have firewall rules. These rules tend to uh, get forgotten from time to time. You remove a server, but forget the firewall rules for the server. So do uh, firewall rule reviews. Um, remember Mark's talk from yesterday. That would be a good point to start. And last but not least, don't overcomplicate things. If you need one firewall, don't put in three. Just keep it simple. So next point would be hardening. A lot of surprise is hiding out there. If you forget it, this is what you end up with. First point is read the documentation of the software you're using. There are a lot of config options that are hidden in the uh, documentation that you only find when you're actually reading the docu. So research if you don't understand those options, find out what they do, and see if they, need, if they can help you. Use access control lists on multiple levels. That can be on the file level, that can be on the ser uh, software level, that can be on the user level. Reduce as much as you can. You don't need a network share server if all you have there is email. It's unnecessary, so drop it. Again, do periodic reviews, see if what you have is up to date. You can do these reviews once per month, once per year. Important is that it fits to your concept and that you're doing it. And I mentioned you should read the documentation. So, patch management. You, you, you don't want to be fighting a huge sword, a huge broad sword with a small stick. You lose, so let's not do that. If the vendor has a patch cycle, Keep to it. Make sure that you uh, get information, uh, get the information that you need. If the vendor doesn't have a patch cycle, remember the hypervisor talk, it's your job to make sure that you actually are up to date and keep up to speed. Patches can be categorized. Is a patch important? If it is critical, and some of you might remember the Apache killer uh, problem going around last year, uh, that one was highly important. You don't have time to test on those. You don't have time, you have to implement the patch as soon as possible. If you can't implement a patch, you have to implement a workaround. So if you have the time, you can test the patches because there's nothing worse than installing a security patch and after that, half of your servers don't work anymore as they're intended to. And we've all probably run into that kind of stuff. I know I spent an entire weekend fixing those problems multiple times. So test patching is really recommended. Again, research the patch to see what it does. It, does it add, does it remove, does it change options in the configuration? If it does, we go back to hardening. You want to know what those options do, you want to know how it's changed, and you want to know how you're affected by it. And last but not least, enforce the patching on the clients. We know where the biggest problems lie on client machines. We've got, the, we've got Adobe as a prime example with uh, the flash problems, we've got the Adobe PDF reader problems. 
If it is not on a good level of patching, problems ensue. So enforce it. A reaction I see a lot from people who look at their logs for the first time. And uh, Alexander Kornbrust said it yesterday in the self-defending databases talk. In a lot of time, a lot of the time you don't have the time to actually react to uh, log entries within a reasonable time. So take that off your hand, automate the log uh, review process, and automate the according reactions that come from it, blocking an attacker or whatever you want to do. Consider correlations, meaning consider what servers need to talk with each other, consider what services need to talk with each other, and then accordingly uh, make sure that your log reviews uh, take that into consideration. On the other hand, there are some log entries that you need to react on. You need to get informed of those, so an escalation process should be established. Again, log reviews are automated. Automation is great to a certain point, and at a certain point you have to go back and you have to do it yourself. Go and read through the logs, go and check that the automation process is still doing what it's supposed to and as it was intended to do. And since many programs use different log formats and some even change their log formats after a version update, that will probably be a lot of your time on there. So, backup management. Yeah, backup management is part of it. Use a dedicated machine. Automate your backups again. If you, do, if you have to remember to do it, you'll forget it once, and there's nothing worse than having no backup when you need it at most. RAID isn't a backup. Restrict the backup machine to only be able to run the backups that the backup machine itself does not need to do anything else. If possible, restrict remote access to the backup machine so that only you can access it. Make sure that backups can be restored. It's great, you've got daily backups and not a single one of them is any use to you. Time wasted. Also consider your backup mediums. You need your storage and you need uh, the encryption on it if you store it by off-site. I mean, it's great, you've got backups and everything, but if you're building birds down, it's no use to you. So, last thoughts. I didn't have a better picture, sorry. So we've got, uh, these are just a few points I want to throw in and then that's it. You've got uh, malware protection, hardware disposal, high availability, redundancy, capacity planning, user management, awareness training, annoying guy that's showing me the clock with 10 seconds left. So, that means I've only got five now, which means I've got no time for your questions. That's the